Hello, I'm Claire Smith, welcome to my channel. So today I'm going to be talking about the darker meanings of some floral perfume notes. So again, I'm going back to the Victorians and their language of flowers in floriography. And I'm going to talk about 10 flowers with some deeper, darker, perhaps even naughtier, illicit meanings. And today's video is a follow on from my first video where I talked about 10 different floral notes in perfumes and I told you the meanings and symbolism behind those perfume notes and those flowers. And I had a lot of requests to do a part two after that first video. I think a lot of people really enjoyed seeing the symbolism behind the flowers that are in their perfumes. So this is part two, but with a bit of a twist. So if you haven't seen me before, I'm Claire Smith and I make videos all about perfume and perfume science, but I'm also really interested in the impact of perfume on society. So if those kinds of things interest you, then please consider subscribing. And also please like this video if you do like this video. So let's get into this. What's the first perfume note? Well, after the first video, I got a lot of requests about one note in particular, and that note was peony. So peonies were described by the explorer Marco Polo as roses as big as cabbages. And I didn't realise that you could get peonies that big, but really you can get peonies that big. And peonies are actually a really long lived plant. They can last for up to 100 years. And in modern times, actually peonies are really associated with marriage and wedding ceremonies. You will quite often see them in floral bouquets for weddings. And they actually represent happy life, happy marriage, prosperity and health. Weirdly enough though, to the Victorians, peonies meant anger and bad luck. And why was this? Well, if you look at how peonies got their name, they actually got their name from a couple of Greek myths, neither of which are especially happy. So in one myth, Paeon, who was the physician to the gods, and also a pupil of the god of medicine and healing, Asclepius, extracted a milky liquid from the root of the peony plant and used this to cure Pluto. Asclepius was actually jealous of his pupil and threatened to kill Paeon, but actually Zeus managed to save Paeon, but only as other things, so he turned him into the beautiful flower, the peony. Another Greek myth links the flower peony to Paeonia, whose beauty attracted the god Apollo. Out of spite, Apollo's half-sister, Aphrodite, turned Paeonia into a peony. And these two legends are likely what led the Victorians to associate peonies with bad luck. In these two legends, the peony is associated with healing and with attraction. And actually, the word for most beautiful also means peony in Chinese. So it makes sense for peonies to symbolise both beauty and love. So peonies have an almost kind of watery, almost aquatic feeling fragrance to them. They are something that's very much like a, an almost a light rose kind of fragrance to me. And they have a sort of sparkling quality to them. So where can you smell and experience peony? Well, actually peony is usually a supporting note with rose or it's with watery florals. It's not often the star of the show, but one fragrance where it is the star is Jo Malone's Peony and Blush Suede. And you can also smell a lot of peony in Versace's Bright Crystal and Bright Crystal Absolute. So the next floral note is actually one of my favorite flowers and that is the bluebell. So bluebells bloom in springtime in the UK. So bluebells were actually originally thought to be traps set up by fairies to catch human children. So it was said that if a child picked a bluebell in a woodland, then they would never return. So bluebells are very similar smelling to things like wisteria and hyacinth, other, other purpley blue florals. Bluebells are probably the lighter end of the scale from wisteria and hyacinth, with probably hyacinth being the strongest. Bluebells are a weird mix of a strong smell of a delicate fragrance in a way. So bluebells in floriography symbolise constancy, humility and kindness. And that's because the bluebell flower kind of nods. It sort of little dances in the breeze and it is very um, humble. It looks like it's bowing. It's also said that if you manage to turn a bluebell flower inside out without tearing it, you will win the one that you love. So if you want to smell like kindness and fairies, which fragrances should you go for? Well, again, very few fragrances have bluebell notes in them. And you can smell bluebell in the Jo Malone fragrance, English Bluebell. And you can also smell it in 
something that was reported to be Princess Diana's favourite fragrance, and that is Penhaligon's Bluebell, but that one is a controversial one. A surprisingly controversial one. A lot of people hate that fragrance, so please try that one before you before you take the plunge because you might hate that one too. So the third fragrance note is chamomile. So chamomile are part of the daisy family and you can probably tell that because they do look quite like a daisy and they also grow very close to the ground. Chamomile actually translates from the Greek for earth apple and that's because chamomile is said to have a slightly apple aroma to it. Personally, I've never really smelled apple from chamomile, but maybe it was a thing in ancient times when, when the Greeks were, were naming chamomile. So I would associate chamomile with chamomile tea, and that makes me think of Peter Rabbit and Mrs. Rabbit giving Peter and Flopsy and Mopsy and Cottontail chamomile tea to help them drift off to sleep. And actually some research has shown that chamomile does have calming properties and that it can help with sleep in some people. So how does chamomile smell? Well, to me, I would associate chamomile mostly with the tea fragrance. So if you've drunk chamomile tea, that's pretty much it, I think. But it's definitely got a little bit of a herbiness. It's definitely a little bit green, perhaps a little bit even like hay. So that kind of dried grass kind of smell. It's, it's something that is, is definitely more green than floral, I would say. And it has sort of a yellowness to it as well. So because chamomile flowers do have that yellow centre, they are actually associated with the sun. And chamomile is said to be associated with patience and also to be something that attracts wealth. But the darker side of chamomile is that it represents a fresh star and it represents moving on from grief. So leaving death behind. So if you want to smell like patience and wealth, which fragrances should you try? Well, you can try... Ralph Lauren's Romance, which is a green, almost herbal rose fragrance. Or you can smell chamomile in Gucci's Memoir du Nerdeur. Or you can smell it in Ceruti 1881 amongst a plethora of other florals. That fragrance really does have pretty much everything else in it as well. The fifth floral note is daffodils or narcissus. So daffodils are a cheery spring flower in the UK. They are bright and yellow or they're perhaps even white with a yellow centre. And they are just a symbol of spring. They are something that are joyful and that show that winter's nearly over. So daffodils are said to represent chivalry and regard. But because they are a spring flower that comes year after year, they also represent eternal life and rebirth. So the dark meaning of daffodils is actually unrequited love. So if you give a bunch of daffodils, that's all well and good, that means joy. But if you give someone a single daffodil, that foretells misfortune. And it also represents unrequited love. So the association of a single daffodil or narcissus representing unrequited love is from the Greek myth that gave the narcissus its name. And that myth is unsurprisingly about the boy called Narcissus. And Narcissus was unfortunate enough to happen to drink from a pool one day. And he looked down and happened to see his own reflection and he fell in love. He was head over heels in love with himself and he didn't realise it. So he would try to reach out to, to the water and try to grab his own reflection. But of course, every time he did that, the, the water would be disturbed and his own image would temporarily disappear. And he was so in love with himself that he didn't eat, he didn't sleep, and eventually he wasted away. And when he did waste away, what was left was a Narcissus flower. And so that's the sad story of how the Narcissus got its name. So if you want to lament your unrequited love and smell daffodil in fragrance, where should you go look for it? Well, you can try Perfect by Marc Jacobs. That fragrance does have quite a strong daffodil note in it. But actually there aren't that many designer fragrances with daffodil and narcissus notes in them. I think that's maybe because to make a realistic smelling daffodil fragrance is maybe perhaps expensive. So the sixth floral note is hyacinth. And hyacinth comes from the Greek for flower of rain. And hyacinth is actually named after Hyacinthus, who was a beautiful prince who was accidentally killed by Apollo. So Hyacinthus and Apollo were both in love with each other and Hyacinthus was obsessed with sport and Apollo was really quite competitive. So one day Apollo suggested that they have some kind of competition and Apollo went first and it was a discus throwing competition. 
And Hyacinthus was just a little bit eager and didn't really follow the health and safety advice and went running after the, the discus or where he thought the discus would throw. And actually the discus hit the ground and then struck back up and actually knocked him out and ended up killing him. And Apollo was incredibly upset at having killed his lover. And when Hyacinthus bled, the drops of blood formed the hyacinth flowers. So in Greece, even now, hyacinths represent remembrance because of that story. Purple hyacinths in particular are the ones that denote remembrance and sorrow because that was the colour of hyacinth that was said to grow from the blood of hyacinthus. So how does hyacinth smell? Well, hyacinths, when they're open, give off a really, really strong, really heady aroma, much like that of the bluebells and wisterias I've already said. But hyacinths really are amping it up to the max. Hyacinths are super sweet, they're heady. They're things that can really give you a headache if you sit too close to them. I quite often have hyacinths in bowls in the springtime in my house and actually the fragrance coming from them is really, really powerful. So where can you smell hyacinth in fragrance and think of hyacinthus? Well, you can smell it in Chanel's sparkling fruity floral fragrance, Chance Eau Tendre. And you can also smell hyacinth in a very different type of fragrance in the really heady floral bomb that is Cacherelle's Anais Anais. That fragrance is powerful. So the next fragrance note is marigold. Now marigolds are beautiful yellow or orange flowers and actually they have a really strong aroma to them, perhaps more from the leaves than from the flowers themselves. And actually that aroma is used in gardening to try to ward off insects. They are planted around other plants in order to try to discourage insects from eating your plant of interest basically. And so marigolds and their foliage actually have quite a strong fragrance and perhaps not always something that is perceived as pleasant either. So in actual fact, early Christians had traditions of leaving marigolds on altars instead of money as offerings. And so that's where the name comes from, because marigold is actually just a corruption of Mary's gold. And this connection meant that the Victorians related marigolds as a desire for riches. So they they associated marigolds with people who who were greedy. Another association of marigolds is that they're associated with the sun, perhaps because of the colour of the the flowers themselves. But the marigold is actually known as the herb of the sun. And actually the Hindus, the Buddhists and also the Aztecs really intimately associated marigolds with the sun and with the power that comes from the sun and even the light that lives within every person in those cultures. In Western cultures, marigolds have come to represent despaired love. So marigolds are quite often represent people losing people, either through deaths or through broken relationships. And actually the marigold itself is a symbol of rejection. So you probably wouldn't want to give somebody a marigold flower because that wouldn't be a very nice thing to do, would it? Marigolds are also said to be associated with jealousy. And so, yeah, Grief, loss, rejection and jealousy, not really not really selling marigolds for me. But where can you smell marigolds and what do they smell like? Well, they're a little bit musky, a little bit peppery, a little bit green, perhaps even a little bit like wet hay. They're sort of aromatic, but in a, in a slightly off-putting way for most people, I think, marigolds. So that's probably why they're not used that much in perfumery. Marigolds are distinctive in fragrances though, and you will know if you've smelt them. And two fragrances that spring to mind, one of which I have smelt, one of which I haven't, but I have heard it described by Chris from the Perfume Nest recently. And she described this one as having a very distinctive smell and she didn't know what it was. And when she checked the notes, she thought, oh no, that's marigold. Mm -hmm. So that fragrance is Adam Levine for women. And that one is actually really affordable. And one that I have, which I think also has a very distinctive marigold note, is Love Struck Floral Rush by Vera Wang. So the next note is a bit of a sexy one, and it's orchid. So orchid in fragrance is a fantasy note. It's something that's been made up by perfumers, but some orchids in real life do smell. So clearly something like a vanilla orchid smells, but other orchids don't. So a lot of my houseplants, for example, I have a few orchids laying around and those don't smell at all. And orchids are meant to represent love, beauty, luxury and strength. So in ancient Greece, orchids were associated with virility. 
And actually the name orchid comes from the Greek orchis, which means testicles. And that's because the fleshy underground tubers of the orchid plant were thought by ancient Greeks to look like testicles. Actually, ancient Greek women believed that if the father of their unborn baby ate large orchid tubers, then they would have a boy. And if the mother ate small orchid tubers, they would have a girl. In the Victorian era, orchids were a sign of immense wealth. They were an exotic flower and they were seen as a very extravagant gift. In Japan, orchids were treasured by royalty. Weirdly, considering the association of orchids with male virility in Greece, in Victorian England, orchids were seen as the ultimate symbol of femininity. And this was because of their straight lines and their symmetry. And in Victorian England, these flowers were likened to beautiful women. And the ancient people of China also associated orchids with immense beauty and with perfection, basically. They called them Lan Huao, which means the epitome of human perfection. So oddly enough, the orchid both represents male virility and also the female form. So it's a very sexy flower. So where can you smell orchid flowers? Well, you can certainly smell vanilla orchid a lot in fragrances. So you could smell it in things like Van Cleef and Arpel's Orchidea Vini. Or you can smell it in fragrances such as Wild Vanilla Orchid by Floral Street. Or you could go for the ultimate symbol of the dark orchid, which is black orchid. But I would say for me, the orchid is not the thing that jumps out at me from that fragrance. But that one is one where the name itself symbolises the orchid. And I can't help but mention that fragrance in respect of orchid. So the next fragrance note is lotus and lotus flowers grow in incredibly muddy waters and the flowers sort of emerge from the the mud and they are immaculate. They are beautifully clean because the flowers have these outer coverings which help it to get through the mud and to keep it pristine. And actually lotus flowers close again and go back into the mud when it's night time. So they have this beautiful kind of rebirth every day where they re-emerge and the fact that they grow in filthy conditions and also the fact that they re-emerge every day is why they are so intimately associated with rebirth in many cultures. So in many eastern cultures they also represent regeneration, purity and enlightenment and actually lotus flowers are sacred to Buddhism and also to Hinduism and if you look at the paintings of Hindu gods often they will be holding lotus flowers so you might see Shiva for example holding lotus flowers well in the Chinese Han and Ming dynasties lotus flowers were said to represent vaginas and actually vaginas were often described as golden lotus and actually that description is used quite a bit in one of the most famous Taoist sacred texts which is called the art of the bedchamber and actually the lotus flower was said to represent the core of a woman's yin essence Physically, a lotus flower is a very fragrant flower and it's something that's quite plump and it's something that opens. So I can see where that symbolism might be coming from. In India, the lotus is also seen as a source of vital energy and wisdom. But let's get dark now because for the Victorians, lotus represented estranged love. And I'm not, I'm not quite sure why they thought that. I've, I haven't managed to find that out. So if anybody knows, please let me know. So if you want to smell like rebirth and enlightenment and whatever else lotuses represent, which fragrance should you choose? Well, you could go for Davidoff's Cool Water Woman, which has a lotus note in it. Or you could also try Bulgari's Omnia Crystalline. So the ninth flower is chrysanthemums. And if you live in the US, you might be very familiar with chrysanthemums because they're one of the most cultivated flowers. In fact, in the UK, they're also quite popular. You can see them a lot in supermarkets. They're quite a cheap flower as well. So I think that's why they quite often end up in floral bouquets. And actually chrysanthemums represent happiness, friendship and well-being, but they also have a little bit of a darker meaning to them. So let's stick with the good things first. So in China, chrysanthemums are quite often given to older people because they represent good long life. In Buddhism, chrysanthemums are associated with yang energy and they are left at temples as offerings. In Australia, chrysanthemums are the official flower of Mother's Day because of their abbreviation, mums. But in actual fact, in quite a lot of cultures, chrysanthemums are associated with death. So for example, in Greece, they are associated with fighting against evil spirits and you'll see chrysanthemums left on graves. So you will quite often see chrysanthemums growing in graveyards in Greece. 
But if you do ever see a chrysanthemum growing in a Greek graveyard, please don't pick it. Because it's said that these flowers will bring you bad luck, headaches, and perhaps even nightmares. So most specifically, chrysanthemums in Austria and Belgium are really associated with funerals. And actually yellow chrysanthemums are probably the most associated colour with funerals because yellow chrysanthemum represents neglected love and sorrow. So unsurprisingly in fragrance, chrysanthemum is not a popular fragrance note. Why would anybody want to be reminded of funerals? It's just not a thing, is it? But very tellingly, one that really says it all is the fact that I found a fragrance called Funeral Home by Demeter. So yeah, I think there's a reason why chrysanthemums aren't popular in fragrance. But uh, Amouage do have a fragrance with chrysanthemum in it, and that's called Myths Woman. So the next floral note is lily, and actually lilies have a lot of different associations. They're associated in the Roman culture with love mainly. So let's start with the good things. So the Romans actually used to fill their pillows and their quilts with lilies because they liked the scent of them, and so they were really associated with love making. Also because the Victorians took a lot of cues from the Romans in their floral meanings, Victorians actually would say that if a lady received a lily as a gift from somebody, she would know that it was from her lover. So lilies are also a sign of purity and fertility. They're intimately associated with the Virgin Mary. The white lily is sometimes known as Madonna lily, and it's often pictured with Mary in religious iconography. And because of this, white lilies are quite often used in Christian wedding ceremonies because they represent purity and virginity, basically. So the deeper, darker side of lilies is that they are really associated with death because they are actually a representation of rebirth. So lilies are actually quite often used as funeral flowers, and that is because that really heavy fragrance also represents the burden of grief. So lilies to some people with that heavy odour can smell like cat pee or like urine and it can be really off-putting. Other people perhaps or even the same people might get really bad headaches. So sometimes for me I do get a headache from lilies and I do have to snip the stamens out of the flowers but actually I do really enjoy the fragrance itself. It's just it does give me a headache. And lily is something that is really quite common in fragrance, or it has been in the past. It was probably quite common in the 90s. It's probably not quite so common now. But lily is a fragrance that can really stand up to other white florals, other strong white florals like jasmine, tuberose, gardenia. And it really complements those notes. So if I was going to pick a fragrance, which one, which one would I pick? Well, I'm going to pick one for my own collection, which is sadly no longer available. But it's probably my best example of a lily fragrance, and that is Tom Ford's Orchid Soleil. Another fragrance that does have strong lily in it, but is probably a little bit greener and a little bit fresher, is Cartier's Baiser Volley, Stolen Kisses. So that's the final floral fragrance note in this video. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did enjoy the video, please press the like button and please also consider subscribing if you haven't done already. And please let me know if you know of any dark meanings to any florals or if you particularly like any of these florals that I've featured in this video. And I'll see you in the next one. Bye.